They'll get it in. And A is being at the top of the list. Okay, so my point is that by just reducing the relevance number you give, you can handle part of that document universe issue. What about IDF? IDF Don't talk about IDF yet. We'll talk about that. Come, remember this question and ask, we'll talk about it later. IDF is a specific method, uh, but we'll talk about it later. Okay, um, fine. So that's my farm of the function. I just need to find the function. Remember, I'm already happy with it. Before you just said R of dot given dot. Now I know R of Q, D given Q U D1 to DK. Where the K results are happening. Okay? How do I do this? How do I get R of D given Q U D1 power to DK? And I want to talk to you in this slide the things that you should be doing. And at the very end of the slide, the thing that you will do in this class. And you should remember all the other things that I talked about because those are better ways of doing IR if you know how to do it right. Okay, and to some extent I'll show you later on that, you know, we, we could all be essentially drunk searching for his keys under the light because there's light there, not because they lost the keys there, right? Okay, so we will do what can be done as again as what should be done. But again, remember the difference between a computer scientist and a programmer? Programmer will just do what can be done, would waste time. And a computer scientist will waste first half a day without writing a single line of code thinking what's the right way to do it. And then obviously write a bad program probably in the next half a day. But the important thing is you would have understood. He or she would have understood what is the right way to do it. Okay, so I'll tell you some ways of doing relevance. Okay, one is specify relevance as upfront. You can elicit these numbers. Remember the track results <coughs> basically are eliciting results. In fact, what does track do? Track actually asks random users from the uh, from the uh, media value, you know, here is the document, here is the query, now what do you think is the relevance number? And then you can elicit this. Okay, in fact, even track doesn't do this part because even on media value, there are not enough people who would spend time trying to say, if I had already shown you these seven documents, what would you say is this document's relevance? There's just too many combinatories. But to some extent, one might say, well, I just want to talk to people, find out these numbers, put it in a huge big table, hash table or something, and then start using it later on. And you can use that for the most common query. You could, actually. But the question, of course, is what is the overall problem is, as I said, it can actually be used for the most common queries probably, but overall problem is it's just too hard. You need one relevance number for each query, user, document, and uh, the shown list of documents combination. There are just too many of those combinations. You need too many numbers. The problem in the world is not numbers, but how do you get them? Okay, if you're eliciting them, you know, it's just too many numbers to get. And even Nielsen would not be able to get these many numbers. Right? So you would not, this, you know, you could, even if you want to do this, you have to start simplifying it. And in fact, what track does is it ignores, for example, the user. It assumes all million new users are the same. Okay, it also is ignores that D1 to DK are unnecessary. And it assumes that I'm going to hold the queries to be just these 100 queries because everybody will see the same 100 queries. And I just need to get, uh, if there are 1,000 documents and 100 queries, I need 1,000 times 100 relevant judgments. That, you know, I can pay and get people to do that. As, you know, these numbers increase, there's just too many numbers I need to ask people. And it's not going to help. Okay, but start always with the most obvious idea and ask yourself, why can't you do it? Because sometimes you can, in which case you should do that. Okay, the second is learn. Okay, actively figure out these numbers from examples. Okay, so I would get some number of judgments and then try to learn the overall function. In fact, we, you know, some of you know machine learning and some of you don't, in which case we'll talk about some of it and the data mining as part of it. But machine learning is finding the function given the data. That's what it is. I gave you data points, I need, you need to find function. So here is data point, okay? Those are the data points, this is x and this is y, what's the function? And there are infinite number of them. You know, obviously most people will say, well, that's not function. But so is this. That's a function too. 
they all fit the data. Which one am I supposed to pick? No, there is no answer. Turns out that basically that's what is you know learning that is figuring that out is the central question of machine learning. You know there are infinite number of so even in machine learning, for example, you can ask if you're looking for lines, you will find lines. If I give you sine wave, actually sine wave data, and I give you points like this, you can still find a line. This is the best line, and this is noise. And you know, it's like basically scientists are always finding lines when there are no lines. There is music, no noise. What? It's music, no noise. Yeah, analogy. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the point again, I'm trying to say here is learning is one way of figuring out relevance. Relevance really should be a learning problem. That's what you should be doing. Okay. You can do it actively, that means you elicit, saying, you know, do you like this, do you like this, etc., and then slowly learn the function that the user has. Or passively, which means just look at, um, you know, like if you're Google or some search engine, you know how many times people clicked on a result and came back right away to the results page. Every time they did it, you can assume that they did like it. And uh, you can also assume that if they clicked on the result and did come back to the page, you can assume they actually are indirectly saying they like this page. Or that they had better things to do in life than stare at the search engine. But that's a different story. So if you assume that they didn't come back, maybe they like this page, so you think that's irrelevant. And you have now training data, you can try to learn the function. So that's one way of doing um, relevance. OK. Um, the other is make up the user's mind. Don't, don't discount that. Right? I mean, we already know that the user doesn't know exactly what they're looking for. How many times have you bought a used car? Right? Did you ever go there thinking what car you want? If you are, that's like the one person in the universe. Right? You will always be steered very carefully to the car that hasn't been selling. And if the guy sells it, you get the he gets the best commission. So he will slowly convince you that what you really wanted, Rav, is not the loser Michael Jordan, the learning guy, but the basketball player. Michael Jordan, look at him, he's much taller and you know, he's so much better at dunking balls. <laughs> really, that's what you want. And I say, yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay? And so, in some sense, if you, you, know, you can combine these two, by the way, all of these. So you can learn, you can specify, you can make up the user's mind. What you're really looking for is this car, man. I know you came to buy like a Honda Civic, but look, there's too many accidents in these Japanese cars. You know? This Ford Pinto, I've kept it for you. <laughs> Lovely car, you know, and you can use this and you'll buy it. Sometimes you'll buy it. Okay, so make up user's mind. And a combination of the above. You can combine these techniques. And uh, in, in difference to the majority in this class who are from the part of the world I am from in India, uh, I would say the best example I know for this is a sari shot. And I think all the women here probably know. And some of the men who are to, you know, accompany them would know this too. Uh, and the way uh, it works, this is a cultural education for you for a minute. Um, you know, you have a clothes shop where all these, you know, sari is a thing that you kind of wrap around and wear. Not men, but women do. And, uh, you know, a store would look like this. They're all over the place. All the saris are all over the place. Unlike the department stores here, where you go and just take everything off of the hangers and try it on and throw it out, these shops have actual shop who will try to show you, just like a used car salesperson. You don't go into used car lot and try to say, I'll use this car for a while, and then I'll use this one, and then figure out what I want. They ha you have to go through somebody. So there's this one person who, a few people there who will be showing you this size. Normally, after some customers have left, this is how the place looks. And then by the end, they will actually put everything back in. And then some new customer comes, and they have some idea that they want a particular kind of sari. They have no clue what they're looking for. I mean, I don't know. Whether women know what they're looking for, I think men tend to know because they mostly buy jeans. Uh, so at <laughs> least you'll be fine. But you know, in general, you have some vague idea as to what you're looking for. And uh, this lady is trying to sell a sari to this lady, and you know, obviously it's good for her to make a deal. And then they have to get small signals saying, you know, you are looking longingly at this color. Maybe you need more of this color. Plus, my boss told me that that sari, which is a really costly one, I'll get a very good commission if I sell it. So maybe that one is what I'll show you. Okay. By the end of this, essentially, there are a whole bunch of people who are showing, both taking some of your understand, some of what you want, and pushing some of what they want to sell. 
This happens in real life. It happens in used car sales people, and now you know that also happens in traditional. Okay? So those are all the ways relevance function should be, could be, probably, must be computed. The problem is it's hard. A, a, a different one is assume or impose an relevance model. Let's say, I would say, R of D given Q U uh, is, uh, you know, length of D squared, sine of that, plus tan of length of Q, something like that. I just make up a function and say, this is your function. It's an easy thing to do. Okay? And so assume or impose a relevance model based on some sort of a default model of D and U. I'll make one up for you. Okay? And I assume, and of course, obviously the one I make up depends on how I represent D and U. Okay? So the user, I have to make a model. And I don't know how to represent humans in their infinite complexity. So I'll say I'll just represent your name and the last few words you spoke. That's you. Okay, and the document, I can't understand the meaning. So maybe I'll say the document is nothing but just the bag of the words in the document. Now I have two bags. What can I do with two bags? I'll make some functions that can deal with two bags. Bag-based similarity, set-based similarity, vector-based similarity. Okay, and so that's another way. It almost looks like a loser's way, even all the better ways of doing it. And yet that's what we'll spend time understanding. Why? Because it's easy to do. And because nobody else seems to do any better. And you know, all you need to do is to do better than the other loser. And then people will buy your software. OK, so we will spend time starting next class as to how to how IR systems impose a default model. And we, like sheep, agree with that default model. Because we have no better way of, you know, we say, yeah, I know I don't like the results Google shows, but Google is Google, so we must probably like it. Okay? So this is what we'll spend time, but remember that these are all good ideas. And when you have reached at the end of the line with this, you start looking at all these other ideas. This is where all the interesting research happens. This is where I get to teach you a class. Okay? And uh, we'll talk about this next class, but I want to just end you with this. A point that what we really wanted was relevance of a document D to the user U given a query Q, and it should have all sorts of interesting information about the user's documents, queries, and you know possibly the learning methods and so on. Instead, we will just convert it into a similarity problem. Compute the similarity between the document bag and the query bag. Why? Is that because that's what IR is? No, it's because that's where the light is. I lost my keys somewhere, I'm searching under the light. Because it's easy. Okay, so once you keep this in mind, you not you should not be surprised that bag of similarity, vector similarity, etc. That you do doesn't work that well. You should be surprised that people actually like it because you know you simplified, oversimplified the heck out of the problem, and yet it seems to start up again because of that sweet spot point. Okay, if you show people some reasonable like you know uh, relevant arguments, they're happy. Okay, we we'll stop here. Next class, we'll essentially start with this, which is how to represent the different components of the relevant function and how to compute the function.